Okay, let's jump into stats. Uh, this has actually been a really cool feature. It actually came about from the Oily Tools Facebook group where uh, someone posted about a statistic they were using for their business, and we just kind of started collaborating on what other stats other people were using in the Young Living kind of family. And at the end of the conversation, I was just kind of overwhelmed that there were so many useful stats that teams were using that I actually had never even used or we weren't using in our business. Uh, so we, we came away immediately from that conversation and started building this feature. So it's it's really a testament to uh, how we collaborate in the Oily Tools Facebook group. And if you're not a part of that group, I really suggest you join that group and actually participate as we talk through features. Many times we work on a feature and then we get feedback from the community uh, and make small modifications or change the feature in, t in its entirety. So I'm going to go through uh, some of these stats that show up on this page and explain why they're here and why I think they're important to your business. We'll go through um, probably 10 or so of these. Uh, some of them I'll go over quickly because they're, they're kind of informational stats, but they're not as meaty as some of the others. Um, but hopefully this will give you a little bit more insight into this tab. And if you're not a real analytical person, hopefully this will actually wake that, that analytical uh, piece of your brain up and make you start thinking about your business in a little bit more um, kind of quantifiable uh, numbers oriented way. The first metric is Oily Tools participation. I didn't put this at the top really uh, just for Oily Tools. Uh, it's about duplication. So this metric gives you the percentage of team members in your organization that use Oily Tools. And if you find that Oily Tools is a great tool for you and it's helping you in your business, then you want to make sure you're duplicating that with people in your team. And the way you can monitor how well you're doing that is just what your participation metric is. Um, of course, these numbers are all fake, but I'm going to go through what these numbers represent. Uh, some people talk about, well, if you have this, then that means it's a good average. And I, t I used to say the same thing, and I'm kind of moving away from that and talking more about you should pick a few statistics that you want to actually focus on. And it doesn't matter what really a good number is based on what the community of other network marketers uh, suggest. What matters is where are you at in your current journey and where do you want to be and what's the next step in getting there. So let's say your Oli Tools participation metric right now is 40%. Some people might say, wow, 40% is amazing. Well, you may look at 40% and say, yeah, but I'm already at 40%. So I'm going to start working to get to 42 or 43 or 44%. So you can start monitoring this metric. Team size is just a raw number of people in your team. This number is typically one off from your team size in Young Living because we don't include you uh, in your team size. Uh, we basically just count all of the people in your downline, and that represents the number of people in your organization. Total customers is a subset of that number. It's just the raw number of customers, retail customers that live inside your organization. Total members is the other breakout of just the, the number of wholesale members that are part of your organization. Your PV, what is your personal volume? What's your uh, total uh, ERPV um, for the month? This is actually for your entire uh, organization. So it adds up the ERPV for every member uh, for this month in your organization and gives you that number. OGV is the current cumulative PV for every member's order who's already been placed, whether it's regular order or a or a um, uh, an ER order and OGV is one of those things that you know you take into account when you're figuring out your rank so it's 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 a good number to see in these stats now at, over time this number is going to increase or should be increasing so that you can uh, grow in rank and it shows that you're producing more volume PGV another just quick stat it's just the personal group volume it's the PV of the legs in your organization that are not qualifying legs that are helping you get to rank this is important because all ranks, I think, above executive, uh, actually, I think maybe at executive, require you to have 1,000 PGV uh, to qualify. Pace OGV. So now we're getting into some good calculated stats. Pace OGV is the, the predicted OGV that you'll have at the end of the month if you keep the same pace you have already. So let's just pretend we have a 30-day month, and on day 10, you're at... 10,000, um, your, your OGV is 10,000 after 10 days. Well, pace OGV in that instance would be 30,000 because we're saying, well, if you've already got 10,000 in the first 10 days and it's a 30-day month, if you kept the same pace, you'd end up with 30,000 
OGV. And this is a really useful metric. Uh, for us, our pace is usually a little higher uh, because we have our ER orders processed pretty early in the month. And you'll learn what your kind of your cadence is for your pace if uh, Uli Tools kind of is a bit more uh, optimistic. Uh, about your pace OGV, you'll start learning that uh, learning that pattern. But it shows you what, man, if I kept the same pace, what my OGV would be at the end of the month. New members is the total number of new members you've got for the month so far. Percent team growth is taking your total team size and the number of new members in your team and determining just what percentage of people this month are new in your organization. New rankers is just a raw number of people who have ranked up this month in your organization percent new rankers is taking the total team size and looking at how many people have ranked up and determining what percentage of your organization is going through and ranking up. Average PV per member, this is a to me a very important metric that you should be following. This is telling you of all of your all of the people in your organization, what is the average PV spread out across all of those people? And the reason that's important is you might be doing really well enrolling people. And I use the word enrolling machine. You might be an enrolling machine. But if the person never places an additional order after you sign them up, then they're really just a person in your organization. And your team size, you know, people like say, oh, I've got 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 100,000 people. At the end of the day, if you don't have people actually ordering product and learning more about the product, they really don't add any value to your organization. So average PV per member is a way for you to say, all right, I'm going to spread out the OGV across all of my members, and I'm going to look at what the average PV is per member to try to either maintain a certain average PV or maybe grow in average PV. And to grow in average PV, you're probably educating more people. You're following up more. You're doing more care calls and you're helping people learn more about products that they can purchase for their family. Total ER is just the total um, essential rewards um, all, all added up. Total processed ER is the total PV of all ER orders that have already processed for the month. These next two people get a little confused about, but they are, they are different. Unprocessed ER is saying, give me all people who are on ER this month who don't have the ER flag as processed. And that could be orders that should have you know gone through yesterday or last week, but it also includes future orders. It's just trying to give you an idea of, here's how much PV that is in your ER bucket that hasn't yet processed. The remaining scheduled ER metric is more of, how much ER do I have projected in terms of what's scheduled for the remainder of the month? And you can use these two numbers and actually subtract unprocessed from remaining and that gives you one of the things I call opportunity PV that really tells you here's ER PV that has actually not processed, uh, that should have processed. Maybe the credit card failed or um, uh, something just occurred where the order just didn't process and it would give you an opportunity to, kick, to care call that person. And there's reports in Oily Tools that we'll look at in a later video that show you how to access those people to find the ones who have ERPV, but for some whatever reason their ER order didn't process. Total percent ER and member percent ER. I'm going to talk about member percent ER. Um, total percent ER is just uh, including customers, but it's taking your total team size, looking at how many people are on ER, and determining what percentage of your organization uses the Essential, Ro Essential Rewards program. Now, many leaders will tell you, and, and I do the same thing, I, and I, I still do the same thing, that 30% is a great number for ER. But let's say you're already at 30%. That doesn't mean you stop working on ER. You should look at that percentage and say, in my journey, I'm at this percentage, whatever. Let's say it's 35%. If you're in that 35% category, that's awesome. But you should look at it and say, all right, I want to get to 38%. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to monitor this metric, and I'm going to do things in my business to try to move this metric forward to grow my ER percentage. And, and the reason that is so crucial is that if you look at the average ER order, which is the next statistic, and you can do this right now, if you look at your average ER order size and compare that to the average PV size, you'll find that the average ER order is two to three times larger than the average PV per member. And what that tells me is that if I have people on Essential Rewards, they really like the product and they're ordering monthly and their order is larger 
than people who aren't on essential rewards. So it's a it's a great indicator that shows you essential rewards is very powerful for your business. You should be making sure you track your uh, your actual percentage of people on ER and figure out a way to grow that percentage, no matter what it is, whether it's 20% or 60%, work on a way to start nudging that number uh, forward. Uh, enrollers are the total number of people who are enrolling in your team. Uh, that's a great metric in terms of it's just a raw number that gives you, hey, there's 50 people who enroll new people. I like to track the next metric. The next metric is the percent enrollers. Uh, I, I like to track the percent enrollers because it really gives you an understanding of the duplication that's occurring in your team. Again, if you're an enrolling machine and you're enrolling five people a week, it it just won't scale over time. And I did these this this kind of metric recently, and I don't remember the, the numbers exactly, but it, it was effectively, if you were an enrolling machine and enrolled two new people every single month for one year, you end up with a team, a team size of 25 people, right? It's you plus the 24 people you just enrolled. But if you focus on duplication and you only enroll one person a month, and every month your members in your team enroll one new member themselves. So only one new member is being enrolled per month per person in your organization. You're duplicating perfectly through your organization. You end up with a team size of, I think it was like 4,097 at the end of the year. And if you look at 25 versus 4,097, that's a pretty drastic increase. And all the only difference between the two is that you focus less energy on being the enrolling machine and focus more energy on teaching duplication in your team. And what you'll find is that you can actually create a lot more leverage and a lot more scale for your business. So I use this as a great, great metric. I just refer to it as the duplication metric. Um, your enrollments, just the total number of team members that you've enrolled. Uh, total enrollments are the total number of, and that's for this month, total enrollments is for lifetime. Now, when people do become inactive and aren't in our data any longer, this number would obviously decrease, um, but it is the total number of people who are currently in the business that are your enrollments. Second, second level enrollments are the total number of people that your enrollments have enrolled. So it's mm -hmm. kind of that fast start, first tier, second tier. Uh, total enrollments are people that you earn the 25% on. Second level enrollments are the people that you earned the 10% on or maybe in currently enrolling or currently earning the 10% on. Just best and worst enrolling month, just some quick stats. Uh, percent star, Plus, I, I just like this because it shows me growth in my in my business. So I look to see that this percent star number is increasing because it tells me I'm growing more leaders and I'm helping more people progress in the business. And what I want you to think about is if you look at the income disclosure statement uh, from 2013, only 8% of Young Living, the member base in its entirety, are a rank of star or above. So if your number here is actually higher than eight, then you're outpacing the average based on the income disclosure statement. So it's a really good metric to show you, are you keeping up with kind of the average uh, in terms of people who are using this as a business building uh, opportunity? Uh, and, and hopefully you're outpacing that 8%. I'd love to see uh, that number be much, much higher than 8% because if it is, it shows you're really growing uh, leaders in the business and you're working to actually show people the great opportunity that we have through Young Living um, and if it's not 8%, start tracking this and start figuring out how do you encourage people to grow this business and how do you support them in a manner that gives them the right tools and the right motivation to move from being potentially just a user of our products to someone who shares the products and uses it as an income opportunity. The next uh, metrics are really just the raw number of uh, executive star, senior star uh, members. I'm sorry, the executive plus was just a total number of executive plus members in your org. The final metrics are just the raw numbers of different people in different uh, ranks in your organization. Now, stats changes over time. We first started with, I think, around 15 or 20 stats, and over time we've gotten great feedback from uh, primarily the Facebook group, and we've added additional stats. So if you use the stats, and maybe there's a stat that you use in your business that we don't actually have currently uh, in the stats feature of Oily Tools, feel free to you know, message me through Facebook or uh, send us an email at founders at starterstep.com and we'll look at a particular stat that you use to see if it's something that we can uh, include in the application. 
I hope this has given you a, a better insight into what these statistics are. And I know for some folks, these numbers get a little, you know, heady or brainy, uh, where they don't really care a lot about this level of analytical uh, review of their business. But what I can tell you is that if you if you pick just two or three of these that you feel like you're not uh, where you want to be, and you tr start tracking those each month, and, and then think of real strategic things that you can do for your business to start moving those percentages forward, like maybe your percent ER or maybe your percent enrollers, um, you, you'll find it'll actually help drive a lot of a, a lot of growth in your business and give you some real quantifiable data to see if you're actually moving the dial in the way that you want to. So I hope this has uh, helped you guys out. And um, If you have any questions, let us know. Well, that's it for this video. We look forward to sharing more videos with you guys in the future.